All right, so here is a correction or the complete solution to the matrix of cofactors. Okay, so I'm sure that if you are, if you didn't get this, then you should know where, uh, where you have made mistake from. What am I saying? Sorry, it's not this. Um, this was part of the question. Um, I saw Bright Kudos looking strangely. All right, so here is 20, and here is minus 5. Then here is minus 11, and here is minus 23, 8, and 14. All right, so this is the complete solution. All right, so this is the matrix of cofactors. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's okay, let's look at number two again, just to uh, solidify this. Okay, before I finish this, now we have what we call the adjoint of a matrix. Okay, the adjoint, adjoint of a matrix. Now, the adjoint okay, the adjoint of A, the adjoint of A, okay, written as Amanda and Andrea um, being catched by your smiles. What's making it get to smile? Written as adjoint of A is defined as the transpose of the matrix of cofactors. Okay, now give us the transpose. So here, A superscript C is the matrix of cofactors. And when you take the transpose, which is T, then you now have the adjoint of A. Okay, remember that the original matrix is A. Why this is the matrix of cofactors. And of course, when you transpose the matrix of cofactors, you will now have the adjoint of matrix A. So for this question, original question we had, we can proceed to find the adjoint. Okay. We can proceed to find the adjoint as what? So we cannot find, so let's say that implies that the transpose of the matrix of cofactor will not give us what? The transpose, changing the rows to column. The first row becomes the first column, minus 24, 6, and 15. The second row becomes second column. 20 minus 5 and minus 11 and the third row becomes the third column minus 23 uh, 8 and 14 all right so this is not the adjoint of a any question Okay, find the adjoint, everybody. Find the adjoint of the matrix. Of the matrix Q. Q equals to 5, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. And four six three. Okay. So everybody, just to solidify what we have done here before. So of course, remember to find the matrix of cofactors first.
find the metrics of cofactors first, and of course, you you will not transpose to find the adjoint. Very well, quickly, we have uh, much more of ten minutes for this. Okay, so what I'm expecting you guys to send to me is your final answer, which is the adjoint. That means after you have found all the cofactors and you form your matrix of cofactors and you transpose, which is the adjoint, then that is the answer you should send to me. If I it appears you are done, you want to cross check. Hans cross check. Okay. All right, Donny Fine. The first your first rule is correct. Keep on sending. Second rule correct. Keep on sending. Exactly. So if I just made it. As the MS Zumuzo just poured it in with anger, with annoyance. And yeah, this your beers are going there, are going these days. And we are, we are looking like a, a big man. Zumuzo. Okay, you're correct. You're correct. You're like, uh, you are really treating it, uh, maintaining it, right? Oh, big mm -hmm. <laughs> don't don't want. <laughs> oh, to fix the sign here. The key day, you are making a mistake in your first and second row that you are sending to me. Comes your first row is correct, and uh, Andrea and Amanda, you are correct with your last row. I think there's one other one you need to correct for me. So give it to me. The one you are owing me. Mother Buchi Michel, you are correct in your last rule. Your last rule is correct. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I will just look at it. Uh, I'll just write the correction for you. I'll just do some, and of course, you can be able to take over the remaining one. Can see your second rule is also correct. Okay. All right, so let's see what we have here. Uh, I want to do, look at the correction now. And come see your third rule is correct. Love you, you complete your tax. Okay, so let's look at what we have here. Okay. Um, Now we are given this matrix here Q. Of course, I will not say cofactor for five. All right. So people are sending. I want to concern. I want to now focus on correction. The key day, correct for the first rule. Second rule, you made a mistake in your first digit. And your third rule, you made a mistake in your second and third digit. The key day is correct. Okay. Now let's say cofactor five. Cofactor 
of 5 is equal to positive, so it's just plus multiplied by the terminant of my null, 1, 4, 6, 3. Okay, and that will give us uh, 1 times 3 is 3, minus 24. And of course, we are going to have minus 21. All right, that is uh, the cofactor of that particular one there. And of course, we continue again, cofactor. Okay, cofactor of the next one is 2. is equals to negative. That is the place sign there. When you negate the rule and column, you're going to have 3, 4. Okay, uh, 4, 3. And that will give us minus into 3 times 3 is 9, minus 16. And of course, 9 minus 16 is minus 7. Minus times minus will give us plus, and we have 7. So equals to 7. And cofactor, we'll now do the next cofactor. Cofactor of 1 is equal to positive plus neglecting the rule and column of 1, you're going to have 3, 1, okay, 4, 6. All right, and positive do not change the answer, so just simply multiply 18 minus 4, and what you have is 14. So I've gotten the cofactor for the first uh, rule, okay? And of course, which already, in fact, the way they appear like this, now the good thing, the way they appear like this will form the first rule. This will form the first column in my, in my adjoint. So if I'm really looking for adjoint, I'll just pick, I'll just, I'll just pick the, the way it is like this and not form the adjoint directly. So if you're forming a matrix of cofactors, maybe if I'm rushing with time, form a matrix of cofactors, start transpose now. Just quickly insert it that way, minus 21, 7, and 14. That will form the first column in my adjoint. So as you also work, you also try to see how to beat time in case you are running out of time in any examination. All right, so cofactor of three, because I will not teach you observation. You are the one as a student that we, the teacher will teach you the general principle. As a student, you are going to learn observation by yourself. Okay, you try and observe what you are learning. From what you are learning, from what you have taught, you try and make some observation. See whether there are, there are shortcuts which the teacher did not even mention. All right, so what the teacher does in the class is to teach the basic principle, and it, you, as a student, you can master it and see whether there are shortcuts you can use to enhance your work when you are uh, run out of time. So, minus, that would be the place sign there. And of course, if I neglect three now, I am this particular point. If I neglect here and here, I'm having two, one, six, three. Two, one, six, three. That will give us the proof factor. It goes to minus into six minus six. And of course, we have zero. Okay? We have zero. And pro factor of uh, the next one now. So, you just for those of you that, that have made mistakes somewhere, so that you see where the mistake is coming from. All right? Pro factor of one is equal to positive. Okay? When I neglect the rule and column, I have 5, 1, 4, 3. 5, 1, 4, 3. All right, that will give me is positive 15 minus 4, and I will have 11. And the next 4, 4 factor of 4 minus, okay, when I neglect the rule and column of 4, of course, I have 5, 2, 4, 6. Five, uh, two, four, and six, and that will give me minus into thirty. Five times six minus eight, and thirty minus eight will give us twenty-two. And um, times minus we have minus twenty-two equals to minus twenty-two. Okay, this one will also form the second uh, column in the adjoint. This the next three set of three number will form the second column in your art joint. All right, anybody having a question problem? Okay, Kimbody say, can I submit my answer? All right, Kimbody, just hold on. All right. Um, all right, so 
If you have made a mistake anywhere, please start this differential to be doing. And let me just finish it off before we end this class. Okay, so I'll just come down here. Okay, so let me just quickly continue. Uh, cofactor. Uh, cofactor. Or oh, four, the next four will now give me positive is equals to the second four now give me plus. All right. Let me swap pro factor. When I neglect the rule and column, I want to have two one, uh, two one one four. All right. And when I find that, that give me eight minus one, and it's equals to seven. Okay. Uh, pro factor of six of element six is equals to minus now. Okay, determinant of minor, neglecting the rule and the column. Five, one, three, four. You have five, one, three, and four. And that is equals to minus into 20 minus three. And of course, 20 minus three is 17. And times minus, you have minus 17. All right, that what you have minus 17. And finally, cofactor cofactor of three, the last three here, that will give a plus. And if they get the rule and column, you have five, two, three, one. And that will give us five minus six and equals to minus one. All right, so, and of course, this also, this last three digits also will form this last three digit now we just found will form the third column also. It will form the third column in my uh, matrix, in my adjoint of Q. Okay? All right. So if I'm, if times against me, I just pick this first column, that will form the, that will, and just from my adjoint, I just pick column one, column one, column two, and column three to form my adjoint immediately without, just without forming matrix of cofactors. All right. But let me just follow the normal process. All right, just so that we can score the full mark. All right, so the next thing to do is from to form your matrix of cofactors first before you now form your adjoint. So I now say that implies that matrix of cofactor Q will now give me minus 21, 7, 14, then 0, 11, uh, minus 21, 22, then 7, minus 17, and minus 1. So this is the matrix of cofactor. And of course, the adjoint of Q, adjoint of Q is equal to the transpose of the matrix of cofactor. When you transpose, you now have minus 21, 7, and 14. Which is then taking this column that we found here and putting there. That was what I was talking about. And you transport this, change this row now to column. You are going to have 0, uh, 11, minus 22, which is then taking this second three set of number and putting. And of course, change this row to column now. You are going to have 7, minus 17, and minus 1. Okay, which is also taking this three set of lines and putting there. So you can actually skip in a typical exam where you are rushing. You can actually skip, you can skip this one and come directly to uh, this, your final answer here, and come directly to here. Assuming you are rushing out of time, but it's good, of course, you know, mathematics step by step is good to show every details. Okay, so that you don't, you don't minus any half, half, half mark or whatever. Okay, but losing half is better than losing five. So if skipping this one will help you to finish up and get, and we just really half back and get maybe the majority of course, it's better. All right, so this is the matrix of, or uh, this is the adjoint of Q. All right, I'm sure that you have um, all gotten that, uh, taking the correction where necessary. Okay, any question, please? Any question? Any question, please? I think for their question. 
Any question, please? Any question? Okay. Uh, before we go, which will soon be going in the next uh, five, six minutes, because um, my battery is even low. All right. Okay, so let's just, I just want to talk about uh, inverse of the metrics. And of course, you are going to do that on your own, not here. So just talk about inverse of matrices. That is where I will start. So in the next five minutes, we should be going. Okay, so this will not also remind you why we say that singular metrics do not have inverses. Or they are alternative defined as matrix, uh, matrices with determinant zero. Okay, inverse of the matrix, which is our next topic. And of course, I have given you every instrument you need to understand or solve the inverse of a matrix. I have given to you, I have explained that. So it means that you are going to, this is not what for me to teach, it's for you what you are going to do by yourself as a classwork or as assignment and submit to me. So I will schedule a link in the Google Classroom so that you can find where to submit the assignment. All right. The inverse of a matrix, the inverse is defined, the inverse of A written as A prime is equals to, it defined as one all over the determinant of A, okay, multiply by the adjoint of A. That is the inverse of the matrix. Or you can simply say the inverse of A, of a, the inverse of A, a matrix, is equals to the adjoint, adjoint A, all over the determinant of A. Now, you cannot see that if the determinant is zero, if the determinant is zero, what do you have? What, what type of fraction are you going to have? Undefined fraction or fraction equal to zero. If A is equal to zero, what does it mean? We discover that from this fraction, that if A is equal to zero, it implies that you are going to have an undefined expression here. It's not possible to find the inverse of A. Do you not see that? So from this, so it means that, what does it mean? If the if determinant is zero, if the determinant of A is equal to zero, it implies that A don't have an inverse. It implies that matrix A has no inverse, has no inverse. So you don't see what we see, they are called singular um, matrices. That's why I'm they are singular because it's like they're just existing alone. They don't have an inverse. So if the determinant is zero, because if you put zero here, anything divided by zero is undetermined or, or undefined. So if you put zero under the fraction, for instance, you have 24 all over zero. It's, on the, it's, it's undefined. You can't solve it. All right. So that's why we say singular matrices are matrices that do not have an inverse or whose determinant is equal to zero. So the previous question we did on singular matrix, they can also ask you that find the value of x for which this matrix don't have an inverse. All right, so that is what they can ask. All right, so we stop here. So I'll not give you a class, um, a class work. All right, so not a class work. So I'm going to show you a class work rather in the Google class and assign in the Google class for you to solve. So you're going to find the inverse of A. Of course, what that means is that if you, you have to find your adjoint, as we have found today, and you divide it by your determinant, you find your determinant, find your adjoint, and of course, you now divide. So for instance, the answer is going to be in this form. Maybe if your determinant, if determinant of A is equal to 20, and you're, you're getting your, your adjoint of A as a matrix, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 0, 1, 4. 
of four. Just simply say three, four, five, six, one, two, zero, one, four. Then multiply by one over 20. So that becomes the inverse. That will be your answer. If it can divide all these particular ones, go ahead and divide each of them. But if it cannot divide, you leave it in this way. Okay, so this is where we stop. So I'm going to schedule. So the, the example is actually going to come in form of an assignment.